Hey guys, how's it going? This is Josh and I want to welcome you to episode 4 of the Books by Josh show. Today's episode is titled Mid-March Update. The reason for this title is because this episode is just me updating you guys on my current situation slash status. It's been a while since I did one of these updates, so let's dive in. If you are new to the Books by Josh brand, then you might be a bit out of the loop when it comes to my current situation. Well, let me fill you guys in. Six months ago, I actually walked away from my job as a manager for a small retail business. It was one of the hardest decisions I had made in my life to that point. I was giving up a guaranteed source of income to work on both myself and my brand, Books by Josh. It sounds crazy, but the time that I took off actually helped me regain my focus. Because I took these six months off, I was able to finish writing my book, start this podcast and produce higher quality content on the books by Josh site. So with that little backstory out of the way, let's talk about what's going on in March, 2017. So at the time of recording this podcast, I recently started a new job in the same field as my old job. It's great, right? Some of you listeners might be asking yourself or want to ask me, why would I go back to work especially when i'm running a website youtube channel and a podcast well the answer is pretty simple expenses even though i have all those other things they aren't built up to a point where they can cover all my expenses when i say expenses i have overhead the website costs money to run and it costs money for all the equipment i use and to maintain my equipment to produce the content i produce not including bills, cell phone, internet, everything in life costs money. So, that's why I started working. Because I need to pay the bills in the meantime. So, this new job. Even though it's in the same field, I'm no longer a manager. I'm a simple sales associate. The pay is a lot less than I was making as a manager before. But the potential income is a lot higher. How can that be? Well, the potential income is higher because as a sales associate, I'm able to earn commission. And that means if I sell stuff, I get paid on it. And by doing this, I'm killing two birds with one stone. The first bird that I'm killing, theoretically, of course, I'm not killing animals, is my selling skills. I get to improve my selling skills daily selling skills are especially important in my field of business because my website my youtube channel my podcast are just different venues for me to sell myself and my brand so even though i'm selling completely different things the lessons i learned through this and the improvements i make towards my selling ability will help me in the long run the second bird that i'm theoretically killing is my expenses because the commissions If I sell, I can cover my expenses and have money left over to invest into other endeavors. So the only thing about working again that I personally see as a hurdle is time management. And time management is, for me, one of the hardest things because my job is still two hours away from home. That means that if I work an eight-hour shift, the total time that I'm away from home is about 12 to 13 hours for the day because it's eight hours of work, two hours to commute to get there and two hours to get back. And the trains aren't perfect. Okay. So if I take 12 hours of my day, that leaves me with 12 hours. So how do I use the rest of the time accordingly to be productive, you know? So let me just go over my plan for today. So I woke up very early today. I've been up since 5 a.m. working on certain things. So 5 a.m. is the start of my day. I'm on five hours since I was asleep. And I start my day by planning out what I'm going to do for the day. And I have to start this podcast that was on my agenda today. So even though this podcast maybe is 10, 15 minutes, if it's a 10-minute podcast... The amount of work that it takes for me to make this podcast is about two hours. Reason why I have to plan out what I'm 
I'm going to say so that I don't get caught with the uh, uh, moments I have a script. I don't go purely based on the script. Like right now, I'm not reading off it. But I want to make sure that's all right. Then I have to record. This take is not the first take. I messed up so many takes before this take that you never hear. Unless I do blooper reels one day. So after that, I have to edit, upload it to all the sites, make sure I do the SEO, everything, search engine optimization. After that, I have to do a video version of it to put on my YouTube channel. So that could take up to two hours. After that's done today, I have to also cut my hair and everything like that because since I'm dealing with people, I want to make sure everything's trimming nice. After that, I have an important call at 9 a.m. for another endeavor that I do on the side. But once that call is done, I have to head over to a post office to pick up a package of cables for this for my whole setup here. And then from there, I head to work. So, on the way to work, which is two hours, two and a half hours, I want to get in at least a chapter of Tony Robbins Unshakable in. As long as I get a seat, it's easy because I have it in hardcover and not ebook. For these type of books, I prefer the hardcovers because these are books that I'm going to refer back to over and over. And I can write in it because it's my book. Who cares what it says inside? After working eight hours or more, depending on how the day goes, I will then commute back home while reading another chapter of the same book. And if I finish another chapter quick, I might put in a half a chapter or a chapter of Gary Vaynerchuk's um, The Thank You Economy, which helps is for my social media presence. That's a whole other thing. Okay, and then once I'm finally back on home in my office, I will start working on tonight's blog post. If I finish that early, I will load up some more Gary Vaynerchuk audios or something on YouTube while I can try to finish the last couple chapters in my own book so that I can start editing everything to get the paperback release rolled out before the end of the month. Have to meet those deadlines, you know? And after that, I'll probably head to bed. Probably won't happen, but I just want to get four or five hours sleep. Crazy day, right? Tell me about it. Most people would have probably asked me, why would I take on such a crazy schedule? Especially now since I started working again. Like, us as human beings, what condition? You work. Then you come home, you relax. But I don't want to continue working for the rest of my life. So, me, I work, come home, keep working. Okay? So, I, the main reason, though, is my goals. If I don't work hard to obtain my goals, who will? The one thing that I learned over these past six months of working for myself is this. Listen to this, guys. Trust me. If you're ever thinking of starting your own thing, this is the golden nugget of this episode. This is for you. So, one thing, remember this, is to never lose sight of your end game, your goal, what you're working towards. Why? Because being self-employed is nice because you're your own boss, but at the same time, it sucks because you're your own boss. Confusing, right? Okay, you can't, if you hate your boss now because he's hard on you, but you're working, you know, you say, oh, I'm going to work for myself. I won't be as hard on myself. That's fine and dandy. You're going to enjoy it. But at the same time, you're not getting as much work done. Okay. When you're the one that has to schedule your hours and stuff like that, you're not putting in the same amount of time and effort as before. If you're working from home, you'll probably have Netflix watching. You'll probably be watching Netflix, Pandora, stuff like that. And you lose track of time. You'll be on Facebook. Trust me. Because I do it from time to time. Okay? Think about all the days you didn't feel like going into work at your normal job. Do you think that you will go to work all the time if you didn't have a boss to answer to? No. You go to a beach or relax. Stuff like that. Okay? We're humans. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. That's literally what's going to happen. The only thing is, the regular job you had paid you guaranteed money as long as you showed up and did your job. When you work for yourself, in the beginning, you realize that the time you spend working does not guarantee a paycheck. 
Prime example is if you're doing YouTube videos. Okay, you spend an hour or two shooting the video. Then an hour or two editing the video. And then you have to upload it. In total, at least five hours go into one video on YouTube. But guess what? If you don't get those views or anything, you make a couple of cents, maybe a dollar on the video. So you're telling me that five, six hours earns you a dollar. Now, I don't know about you guys, but minimum wage in New York right now, I think, is like 11. In the city, Westchester is like 10. So let's just go off Westchester, okay? So in those five hours, if you were working a normal job, you would earn $50 at minimum wage. As opposed to, let's say, a dollar. And remember, you still have to pay tax on both of the incomes. So if you earned a dollar after five hours work, would you feel discouraged? Would you question your career choices? Yes, of course. After you put in all this work and you don't see the results, you're going to find it hard to get out of bed. And that's when you have to step it up. You have to step up and become a motivator for yourself. That's why I say motivation is very important. Especially in the beginning stages of any solo business, solo proprietorship, anything like that, that you're your own boss. Because if you're not motivated, you don't produce, okay? So, the main thing to do is hold yourself accountable. You have to get out of bed and start your day, but you have to hold yourself accountable. You have to set goals, deadlines, okay? Because if you're accountable, you can know that you're actually producing something because you're holding yourself to it, okay? It's like me. I personally have a timesheet that I fill out and list what I accomplished and what was left over for another day. And then I pay myself off that. How can I pay myself? Well, I buy stuff that I want. Not like big things, like flat screen stuff, like that little trick is here and there. After I have a week of work, you know, week or two in, as long as I'm doing the work, then I get paid. Okay? As your own boss, you have to be strict and make sure that you're working towards your goal. Result producing activities, guys. That's a topic for another day. Okay? But remember, I'm no expert in managing myself yet. But what I am is a person that understands the fundamentals of managing myself. Okay? This show doesn't guarantee any income whatsoever or generate any income. I do this show because I want to. Okay? Like I said, there's no income attached to this. It's like my site. There's no income. I don't run ads because I hate ads when I go to other blogs. Okay? I've been told by many people that I give good advice. And all I want to do is share my advice with more people because they might be able to help you. Hopefully, my tangent on getting being your own boss helps you. It might. So, that's the whole thing. Money is nice. Don't get me wrong. It's nice to be able to afford things, but it's not my main focus. I honestly let a sale walk yesterday because it wasn't the best choice for the customer. The customer was already screwed over twice. And even though I wasn't trying to screw them over, I'm not going to make them pay an additional amount just so I can get a commission off them. No, because that's not right. Okay. My goal is to bring joy to everyone I deal with. And trying to make a quick dollar off someone goes against that. It's easier to maintain a customer than it is to get a new one after you lose a customer. Okay. Anybody in business will tell you that. That's why the relationship with the customer are important. Okay, like always, guys, if you guys enjoyed this episode of the Books by Joshua, please feel free to subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or even YouTube. If you want more content, feel free to visit my site, booksbyjosh.com. If you want to follow me on Twitter, you can find me at Books by Josh. If you wish to support me, feel free to visit my Patreon page, which is, of course, patreon.com slash Books by Josh. Like always, guys. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya. In the next one. See ya. In the next one.